Hey everybody, welcome to virtual wheelchair yoga. Today we are live streaming our class from Onboard the Impossible Dream catamaran, a unique vessel, the world's only sailing catamaran built from the keel up to be universally accessible to our friends and family in wheelchairs. This class is sponsored by the Woody Foundation which is another organization um, dear to our hearts. They provide assistance and improve the lives of people who have had brain and spinal cord injuries or are living with paralysis. I am Natalie from Dharma Yoga Studio and we're in it together. We've always been in it together. We've been doing these wheelchair yoga classes on board the Impossible Dream for a while now and at our brick and mortar Dharma Yoga Studio in Coconut Grove. We used to meet, we used to commune, not socially distanced at all, actually quite close in our endeavors. And uh, we have gathered a really beautiful group together over the last few years with our sponsorship with the Woody Foundation. But circumstances have prevailed and now we are live streaming this from beautiful Biscayne Bay in Miami. And before we start the class and do some guided movement together, we just want to be transparent about what's going on. We would much rather be here with the friends and family that are normally here with us. We've had, I think, about 12 people at a time on the decks of this boat. This is what this boat was built for. In fact, every year this boat goes up the eastern seaboard all the way up to Canada often stopping along the way at different ports to do special meetings and to um, broaden the horizons of people who aren't really aware that there are boats like this that you can get on with a wheelchair. So um, in their educational efforts and in our efforts to provide this kind of um, guided therapy, movement therapy and yoga, breathing and movement exercises for our friends and family who need it most, we want to be really transparent. We have come out here to the bay to do these classes because we're all kind of sheltered at home and this is our home and it's unfortunate that we don't have all the people with us because we really have space on this boat to do it she's 60 feet but um but today we're just going to have a, a it's just going to be me sorry to say so it's not going to be as exciting as it is it's not going to be as beautiful and poetic as it normally is when all our friends are here with us so that you can make a comparison you could see and be inspired by how other people move and how other people um, enjoy this kind of guided therapy but um but obviously we're all in the same boat together and you're here with us virtually so we're psyched that you are taking the time to join us and um, we're just going to um, do some really gentle gentle moves. I'm going to guide you through some, some movement and I'm going to suggest visualizations. And um, all the while we really, want to, we really want you to let us know how you feel about us doing these classes because we need your feedback and we, and we like your feedback because we'd like to keep on going and doing this. Um, although on some level we, I am breaking the stay at home suggestion. But this is essential work and that's the, that's the attitude that we have about this because all the people that are at home and then aren't able to move freely 
are, I think, disproportionately affected by this stay-at-home order. So um, I'm going to guide you, and if you have anything to say, please leave your comments in, um, in the comments section. And just know that this comes um, out of the goodness of our hearts and also the, the, um, the desire to be true to our mission. And that is that uh, no dream is impossible and we're gonna get through it together. So the first thing I'm gonna suggest is that you notice your breath. This is pretty much how we always start the class. So I'm gonna ask you to sit comfortably and to take your hands onto your abdomen, low onto your abdomen and spread out your fingers so that you can feel your body moving as you breathe so that you can undeniably notice how your body expands as you inhale. And you can notice how your body contracts as you exhale. There's nothing flashy about it. It's just consistent and reliable and steady and unique. A lot of times in yoga settings, we use a special technique of breathing, which we call the ujjayi breath, and that is just to make your breath a little more audible to you. So we do that by barely constricting the back of the throat so it almost sounds like you're kind of snoring a little bit, just a, a little bit, just to make it more obvious that you're breathing, just so that you can follow the sound of the breath more easily, just so that you can tune into its rhythm more easily, and so that we can celebrate it more. If you don't feel your abdomen moving as you breathe, at this point, exaggerate your breathing a little bit. Send it a little bit lower on purpose. So you create a little more space with each inhale for the lungs to expand, for the rib cage to open. And try to let each exhale get a little more pronounced, like a, perhaps a little louder, perhaps a little longer. And all these things are suggestions. Stay like that for the next few rounds of breath so that you still have your hands on your abdomen, so you're trying to breathe specifically, deliberately into your hands, down low. And keep the breath audible. That's one of the hardest things to do, is to maintain that audible breath because it's not normal. Do your best to breathe out of your nose the whole time. If you have to breathe out of your mouth, it's okay. In fact, for any of the suggestions that I make, just remember they're only suggestions. If something's not comfortable, don't do it or do it differently. If at any moment your breath gets short or you feel like you're gasping, then that's not what we want. So think again. We want to honor the breath. Let's take seven more deep breaths like that. And notice the count, the rhythm of your breath. Notice if the inhale or the exhale are longer or if one is shorter than the other. Just observe that. And over the next few breaths, I'm gonna ask you to try to equalize your inhales and your exhales, equalize them in length. So establish a rhythm in your own mind, with your inner ear. And however long your inhale is, try to make the exhale equal to that and vice versa, however long your exhale is, make your inhale equal to that. So we're moving toward equal breathing. Take several more breaths like that. Again, just a suggestion. And now we'll start to move a little more noticeably with the breath. So, 
as you make your next inhale, let your arms stretch out straight, like you're reaching for the floor in front of you. Really stretch out your fingers. And then as you exhale, let your arms float back down to where they were. So believe it or not, that's the assignment for the next few rounds of breath. Inhale, let the arms stretch out straight, straight as you can. And exhale, bring the arms back. So just keep on doing that. And maybe you can lift your arms a little bit higher. If you can, you do that slowly, little by little. So that we're creating a little suspense. You make your elbows as straight as you can. You make your wrists as straight as you can. The fingers also. If you can lift the arms a little higher, you do that. Let's go for seven more rounds of breath. If you keep that breath a little more audible, it's easier to follow. It's easier to move to its rhythm. Let's do four more. Don't worry if the arms are behaving symmetrically or going higher. It doesn't matter. And then the next time we stretch the arms out, we're going to keep them there for a few breaths and we're going to open and close the hands. So as you inhale, let the arms stay up, let the fingers separate. As you exhale, close the hands. Just do that back and forth a few times. And if you have your arms lifted, you can start to bring them down a little bit. And then slowly, we're going to bring the arms down into neutral. Okay, now just relax your arms. We're going to do something a little more percussive with the breath and by moving the shoulders. So on your next deep breath in, let your shoulders lift up toward your ears. And as you exhale through the mouth, let the shoulders fall. (sighs) Keep on doing that. Inhale, shoulders lift. And exhale, shoulders drop. So keep on doing that. And you might find that it's easier to do with your arms kind of out to the sides, whatever it takes. So just be percussive so you're kind of shaking out the arms at your sides with every exhale. And you let it be audible through the mouth. (sighs) Do that twice more. Inhale. Exhale. And then once more. Inhale. Shoulders lift up. Exhale. Shoulders drop. And then just keep shaking the hands. Shaking the hands. Shaking the elbows. Shaking the arms. So this can increase the circulation in the limbs and I hope that you saw the dolphins that were just swimming behind the boat. Biscayne Bay is beautiful today as usual and then after having shaken the arms like that now just do a comparative analysis now just let the arms and the hands remain stationary. Just notice any tingling sensation you have in the fingers or the hands themselves Let the breath stay nice and deep. So we want to be serious about the breath. Focus on its sound. Because that is one of the most challenging things to do in any yoga practice, and that is to really stay focused. Actually, it's a challenge at any time for any of us. And of course, as you're trying to keep the breath audible, it's going to grow quiet and usually it does that because the mind is wandering. So if you notice the sound of the breath growing quiet, bring your focus back to what you're doing, back to your chair. And now we're going to bring the hands together and we're going to rub them into each other. So we're kind of warming up the hands. I hear this is what people do when it's cold outside, when their hands get a little bit cold. Imagine that. And do it with enough force that you really feel your hands warming up. So that requires some coordinated action of the forearms, of the elbows, of the upper arms, of the chest, the upper back, the shoulders, of course. And now take one hand and squeeze the other one with it. So keep on squeezing like that. So in effect, you're giving yourself a massage to the hands. 
and just take one hand and start to trace the, um, the rim of your palm with your thumb, with your fingers, especially this, the web of um, muscle between the thumb and forefinger. And then keep on going. That same hand goes past the wrist, to the forearm, all the way to the elbow. So squeeze with your fingers. So we're stimulating that circulation, not just to the surface of the skin, but a little bit deeper into the muscle tissue. And we're going to make the switch, of course, to the other side. So you, with your opposite hand, you squeeze the muscles in the palm between the thumb and forefinger. And we keep on going. This is where... A lot of us get tension because we spend quite a lot of time online, perhaps, on the computer. And now we're going to take the hands and we're going to bring them together in front of the chest. So we have some options. We always have options. At this point, I'm going to ask you to interlace your fingers if you can. But um, we know that a lot of our friends um, with limited uh, uh, coordination in the hands sometimes have a little hard time doing this so take some time to do it a lot of times we can just do it if we if we persevere we remain patient kind of just keep on trying to work the fingers together right sometimes um, we can get help from others and if it's not gonna work then we take one hand into a fist and we hold on with the other right so now we're gonna go with the breath we start off with the hands in front of the chest and as you make your next inhale you let your arms stretch straight and as you exhale, you bend the elbows. Okay, that's what we're doing for the next few breaths. Inhale, stretch the arms straight as possible. So create some resistance. And exhale, bend the elbows. Now, if you have your fingers interlaced and you feel like getting a little more of a stretch in the um, palms and in the forearms, then of course you turn your palms forward. So keep on going with that. Let's do seven more. Just go with the breath. That's the hardest part. Let's do three more. Arms straight as possible. Two more. Okay, last one. Stretch your arms straight out. And then slowly bring your hands back down to your lap. Okay, so now we're going to do some movement for the head and neck. Right? So we're going to match it to the breath's rhythm. So just make sure that everything else about the way you're sitting is comfortable. And even with this, it looks like a simple move, but no forcing, please. As you inhale, let your head lift, so your chin is lifting. Maybe you feel a stretch in the front of the throat. And as you exhale, you bring your head down, chin toward the chest. Okay, so do that a few times. Inhale, the head lifts up. The eyes lift, focus them on something. And exhale, you bring your chin down toward your chest and also focus on something in front of you, something specific. Let's do that three times more, just with the breath. Inhale, the head lifts. And exhale, the head drops. And two more, the head lifts. And the head drops. And then last one, just like that. Inhale, the head lifts. And exhale, the head drops. Okay, we're going to keep on going with this idea of moving the upper body, moving the hands, the arms, and, you know, including more movements of the head and neck. So this time we're going to bring the arms out to the sides. So hopefully you have space out to the sides today. So you just make your arms as straight as you can. Now, if it bothers your shoulders to have the arm, the hands at the height of the shoulders, then of course you put your hands down a little bit. So you get the picture that you're always welcome to make an adjustment so that it works for you. Okay, so now we're just gonna do some rotation. So as you inhale, rotate from the shoulders so that the palms face up toward the sky. And then as you exhale, rotate the other way so the palms face down or maybe even back toward the space behind you. And then keep on going with that in inhale, Externally rotate from the shoulders so that your palms face up. And exhale the other way so your palms face down, maybe back, maybe more. Do that twice more. Inhale. So you're moving from the shoulder and you're letting that move radiate down through the arm all the way to the fingers. Let's do one more. Inhale. 
palms facing up. And then exhale, palms face down. But remember, we're not just doing the hands and wrists, we're also doing the shoulders. Now let's let the arms relax now. Okay. And we're going to keep on going with this idea of moving the arms. So we're going to start off almost in the same way. So the arms are going to come out to the sides, but this time I'm going to ask you to bend the elbows so that the palms are facing forward to start. Same idea. If something's not comfortable, you just change it. So take a deep breath in, move your elbows back so you kind of feel like you're opening up the chest. And then as you exhale, bring your elbows forward. Try to get your forearms closer together. Do your best to keep them parallel. Okay, so inhale, open the arms. So we're working with the muscles in the chest. And exhale, bring the elbows forward. But we're also, of course, working with the shoulders, working with the arms, the hands, the fingers. Also working with the upper back, sides of the body. Keep on doing that. Inhale, open. Collarbones broaden. Exhale, bring your elbows forward. And then last one. Inhale, open the elbows, separate them. Chest opens up and then exhale, bring the forearms toward each other. And then bring your arms down. Okay, now we're going to make circles with the shoulders. So with that same idea that we're going with the breath. So as you inhale, bring the shoulders up, back. And as you exhale, bring them down and forward. Okay, so however you just interpreted what I said, doesn't matter. Just keep on going in the way that you're going, however, whatever direction you've chosen to start the shoulder circles. Keep on going that way for a few breaths. And you'll notice that as you crave more movement, you'll start to naturally involve your chest, your rib cage, your upper back. So let it happen. Don't fight it. To get that movement, make the cir circles as big as you can. So remember the, the shoulder joint is really mobile. Ideally, let's go the other way. So whatever way you were going now, the opposite way. Try to move the shoulders symmetrically and let the arms cooperate. Do it to your breath's rhythm. Let's do two more in the same direction, whichever way you're going. And then we're going to bring the shoulders into neutral. Okay, we're going to keep on going with this idea of moving the, um, the head, the neck, and the arms, right? But now we're going to use the hands as well. We're going to try to get a little neck stretch. So I'm mirroring you. So I'm going to take the left hand and I'm going to hold on to my right clavicle. I'm going to try to do it without loosening my vegan chinchilla microphone puff so i'm taking my hands and i'm holding on to the collarbone <laughs> okay any way you can get your hand in place and now keeping your hand there your hand on your chest and your fingers kind of on that um that collarbone let your head fall to the side a little bit to the left in this case and as you do that you're gently pressing down with that left hand on the right side of the upper chest on the right collarbone now bring your head back into neutral. And now we're gonna go with the breath. So this time we're gonna reverse the breath. So take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, let your head go back. Keep your jaw closed, your mouth closed here to get a stretch in the neck. And then inhale, bring your head down. Same kind of thing. And exhale, lift your head up. Inhale, bring your head down. twice more exhale head lifts last one inhale chin comes down toward the chest and exhale head lifts now we're gonna bring the head into neutral and we're gonna keep using this um, this left hand so now we're gonna lift the hand up and we're gonna hold on to the top of the head and then we're going to keep on going so that the hand is coming over toward the opposite side of the head. So your fingertips are kind of reaching for your ear, the opposite ear. So we're going to start with a nice deep breath in. And on the exhale, we're going to gently draw the head to the left. Notice I didn't say tug or pull. Just coax it to the left and stay there for a few breaths. Nothing forced, please. Allow that right shoulder to draw down and perhaps back. Let's stay here for seven breaths. 
Really notice the breath. Notice how much the body moves to accommodate for the breath. And everyone benefits from stretching. But most of us don't customar customarily make time for deep stretching. And that's what we need for deep stretching. Time. Time to let the stretch really seep in. So we're done with this side. So exhale completely. And then on the inhale, slowly just bring your head back into neutral. Okay. So of course we're going to do the same things to the other side, but we'll do something in between. So sit comfortably with your lower body, resting your hands and your arms however you like. And then inhale, you turn your head to one side. Just pick a side so that I'm not bossing you around. And then as you exhale, turn your head to the other side. So as I do this, I feel pretty lucky because I can trace the line of the horizon with my eyes. But if you happen to get dizzy when you turn your head like this, keep your eyes closed, of course. Let's do one more each side so the head is turning as much as it comfortably can to the side. And then we're gonna come back to neutral with the head. Okay, same thing to the other side. So we're gonna take the right hand now and we're gonna hold on, oh dear, I have one on the other side, to our collarbone. Mm -hmm. It's vegan. Okay, so you grip your hand there, press with your hand on the chest. And a lot of our friends that come to the wheelchair yoga classes, a lot of our friends that are living in wheelchairs, um, don't have two hands, or two arms. So of course it's okay to use the same hand. And some of our friends don't have hands at all or arms at all. So we're just going for it. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale, let your head go to the side. Of course this can be done without using your hands at all. So you hang out like this, and now we're pressing down. We're keeping both shoulders drawn down. We're bringing the chin toward the opposite side of the chest. All right, allow that shoulder to stay drawn back. And now we're gonna go with the breath. So bring your head back to neutral. Take a deep breath here in neutral, and then as you exhale, let your head drop back. So again, keeping the mouth closed will intensify the stretch in the neck. And then inhaling, you bring your head down. And exhaling, you drop your head back again. So let's do one more. Inhale, drop the head down. And exhale, lift the head up. And then let's come into neutral. Now we're gonna use the same hand to do the opposite. So we're gonna take it onto the crown of the head, keep reaching over toward the opposite side, maybe fingertips toward the ear. We take a deep breath to start. And then as you exhale, you let your head draw over to the opposite side and you'll get a stretch on that left side of the neck especially if you drop your shoulder down away from the ear so you're lengthening creating a little resistance and of course all that takes is a little self-awareness self-control a little mobility and like i suggested go to the breath Notice what happens with each round of breath, what happens on each inhale and each exhale, how the body effectively changes shape. And being on this boat in Biscayne Bay, anchored right now, it's interesting to note that as the boat moves, the stretch changes as well because the body is moving in response. 
Now let's make our last exhale here, and then we're going to slowly bring our head back into neutral so that we are sitting up nice and tall again. And we're going to take the hands onto the thighs and just pause. Let your palms face up, in fact. So this is a gesture of receiving. So again, add a little symbolism here. We're all ready to receive. Just let the boat move you. Let the breath move you. And now we're going to do another little stretch. So let's let the arms come down. So now we're going to do a deeper stretch for the, um, the sides of the body. Okay. So again, I'm going to be mirroring you. This time we're going to seek a stretch on the right side. So you're going to take your left arm and you're going to hold on to whatever you got. I happen to be in the director's chair, but um, if you're in your wheelchair, your hand can be on the armrest, it can be on the chair itself, um, it could be on anything. Maybe you have something out to the side. So we did this when we did the class the other day on the, um, on the front of the boat, on the, on the bowsprit, I was holding on to that. So we're going to bring the right arm out to the side, stretch out, we're going to bend the elbow to put the hand behind the head. So if the hand won't go behind the head, having the arm out like this or any other way is going to still have its positive effects. Now we're going to lean the upper body to the left. So your lower body is going to remain stationary. And as you do this, you're bowing open the ribs on that right side. So you're kind of moving your waistline over to the right to allow for that opening in the intercostal muscles. Now, as you do this and you take some nice deep breaths, try to gently press your head into your hand, and that might even give you a stretch in the chest. And we know that a lot of our friends that are in the kind of chairs who they, that have to be pushed with their hands are constantly using a lot of effort in the upper body, and a lot of those muscles that are repetitively called upon will get tight, of course. Let's take five more breaths here. If you want to put your head in another position, do that. Let's take two more rounds of breath here. And then we're going to slowly come back into neutral. And we're going to go with a twist right here before we do the same thing to the other side. So the lower body is going to remain stationary. We're going to take the hands over to the side, to the left side, to hold ourselves in place. So those of you who use legs, Keep them willfully stationary. Feet rooted down, shins in place, muscles in the legs engaged. So if you can use the legs, use them like that so that you're not negating the fact that you can engage those muscles. Otherwise, you're just going to rely on the idea that the lower body is going to remain stationary and the twist is going to come from the waistline up. So everybody take a nice deep breath in. And then as you exhale, use your arms to help turn your upper body a little bit more to the left and stay like that for a few breaths. So if you have to adjust the way you're holding your hands, your arms to help maintain that twist, do that. And if you can turn your head a little bit more to the left, do that. So you're letting the eyes guide you, turn the eyes to look at something far back behind you. And we're going to maintain this twist by using the effort of the upper body. We're going to maintain it for about seven more breaths. And I'm going to encourage you now to try to send the breath into the back of the lungs. So identify them first and try to open up the rib cage in the back of the body. And do your best to keep the front of the body as still as you can. So you're engaging the abdominal wall so that you can more precisely feel the breath move into the sides and the back of the body. Let's do two more breaths. And then slowly but surely, we're going to come back to neutral. And we're not in a rush. We're never in a rush in this class. 
So come to neutral and take five good deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth, trying to keep your breath audible. Audible to you. And if it helps you to close your eyes, you do that. If it helps you to look at this beautiful view that we're surrounded by, do that. And then we're going to come back to neutral. And then let's go straight for that twist to the other side. So we're going to take the hands and we're going to hold on to the chair, however you like, whatever's the best way, holding on with your hands, with your arm, take a nice deep breath in, and then exhale, twist, and then stay there for a few breaths. And it'll feel different on this side, of course. We're all asymmetrical. Again, identify the back of the lungs, the back of the rib cage, even the back of the waistline. And in order to send the breath more completely into the back of the lungs, try to engage the front of the body a little bit more. Engage the abdominal core a little bit more. So it's natural for the breath to feel a little bit more constricted when we do a twist, but not to the point where you feel like you cannot breathe. So let's be nice about it. Let's do five more breaths here in this twist. back and face forward and we're going to do that side stretch on the other side so this time we're going to be lifting the left arm so either you have it out to the side like this or you can take the hand out or up whatever feels good for you the hand behind your head hold on with your right hand to whatever you have side of the chair wheel of the chair or something next to you deep breath in and then as you exhale you bow open the left side so you're moving the waistline a little bit to the left so it's not so much a feeling like you're leaning or tipping to the side because we want to verify that the lower body remains in place, willfully stationary. Feel free to turn the way that you turn the head so that your neck remains comfortable. Three more breaths. And then let's come back into neutral, into an upright position, and we'll sit up nice and tall. And hang out for a moment. And feel the aftertaste of those moves. So in it, most kinds of yoga class, we are guiding or being guided through movement and we are asked to bring our focus to the breath and when we are doing those two things we are working not not only on our physical strength and and stretching and on our proprioception and our um, you know just our body awareness in general but we're also working on our powers of concentration aren't we we're working on our powers of focus and so when we use that technique of making the breath audible, it, it really is a way, it gives us a way to focus on something steady, something reliable, something rhythmic. And we, in effect, put ourselves in a place where we notice that the mind is wandering. We notice that 
our focus is splintered somewhat. So really what we're doing is we're working on honing our powers of concentration, and we know that when we can su sustain concentration, we're working toward a meditation practice. So more and more people, because of, I think, raising anxiety levels and the pressures of social media, even before this present situation that brings us to the decks of this boat, many people have been seeking some kind of inner calm some kind of self-care, some kind of pause from all the responsibilities of being connected. So now, even though we're separated physically, we're getting more and more connected. So today, we're gonna add something that we haven't done together in the last few classes. We're gonna add um, a stretch for the upper back where we're going to hold on to something with the hands. So I am going to move myself over to another section of the boat. I'm gonna go up onto the ramp. And um, this is gonna be kind of cool for you viewers who have never seen this boat because you'll notice that um, the handrails are pretty low so that people in chairs can roll up pretty easily. It's pretty cool, okay? So I'm not exactly centered here, but it's okay because the important thing is that you just get the idea, right? And so I'm pretty sure that you can figure this out. We're going to take the hands and we're going to reach for something in front of us, something stationary. And um, you all have friends, I know. So if your friends are there, they can help you out here too by holding on to something or maybe you can even hold on to them, which might be fun. So we want to get some kind of stable um, positioning of the hands. And we're going to round the back. So you're going to let your chin come towards your chest and you're going to cave in the front of your body. So your belly button is moving in towards your spine and you're compressing the front of the body a little bit. And as you're compressing the front of the body, lean back a little bit too, and hopefully you can feel the shoulder blades kind of drawing open in the upper back. So we're protracting them away from the spine. And stay like that for a few deep breaths. And again, exaggerate the breath so that you feel your body really expanding on the inhale and you feel it really compressing on the exhale. And even if you get a slight grip with your hands, you can still do it. You can still create that opening in the back of the body. So stay here for two more breaths and just notice how much movement is required by the breath itself. And then we're gonna come all the way back up into neutral. And now we're going to try it with just one arm, with just one hand. So we're going to take the right hand and we're going to reach across. And I'm going to hold on to something else. So we're going to reach across toward the opposite side. Right? And the other hand we're going to use to kind of stabilize ourselves. So we're bracing our hand on the, the arm of the chair, the wheel of the chair, whatever you got. And you're reaching forward, so you're feeling that stretch across the back of the body. So same kind of thing. So take a nice deep breath in. And then as you exhale, lean your upper body back a little bit. And then we'll do that back and forth with the rhythm of the breath. So as you inhale, you lift your chest. You broaden the collarbones. And as you exhale, you lean back again. So you're holding on with your fingers. You're leaning back, creating a little resistance with the other hand as well. And let's do that a few times more with the breath of the breath's rhythm. So inhale, chest lift. Exhale, you lean back. See if you can get that feeling like your shoulder blade is stretching away from the spine. And then last one, inhale, lift the chest up. And we're gonna hold this next one for seven breaths. So you lean back, you keep your hand in place, and you keep taking those nice deep breaths. Let your head fall, and like we said before, and like you already know, these stretches take time. So we need to devote a little time. You deserve a little time. Hopefully, you have some fresh breeze where you are, fresh air. There have been reports all over the world about waters getting clearer and air becoming fresher. Now let's slowly lift up into neutral, and then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Of course we are, because we're always concerned about being complete in our movements of honoring the complementary actions 
and the complementary patterns that we see in nature. And uh, that complementary pattern is, is really expressed very clearly in the breath itself, with the pattern of the inhale followed by the exhale over and over again for our whole lives. So we're going to go with that as an inspiration. So left hand is going to reach across to something. doesn't have to be exactly the same thing, of course. So this time we're going to be concerned about trying to get some stretch in the upper left side. So, or whatever hand is out in front of you. So you're going to take a nice deep breath to start. And then exhale, you're going to lean back. And let's hold the first one for a few breaths so we can get the idea of it. So you figure out how to brace yourself with both hands, with either hand, chin dropping down. Even changing the way you're holding your head and neck can make a difference. So it's just a way to you, for you to acknowledge your unique abilities. Feel that left shoulder blade drawing away from the spine. And then we're going to go with the breath. So as you inhale, you lift your head up, your chest up. And then exhale, you go for that stretch. So you lean your upper body back. Try to send the stretch into the upper back. Try to send the stretch into the shoulder. Draw it away from the core of the body. Let your upper back lean back so you're allowing the scapula to draw away from the spine. Getting the stretch specifically there. So for our friends that use their arms so much in their chairs to move around. This is particularly helpful. Let's do two more. And then one more. Let your heart lift. And then round your back. Again, we'll hold this one for a few breaths. And you can wiggle around and move around, you know, just like you would on any dance floor. Two more breaths here. And then we're going to slowly, slowly lift up and come back into neutral. All the way into neutral. So I'm going to move back to where I was earlier. And you can have a glimpse of the bay as I do so. It's beautiful out here. It's really stunning. So we're going to keep on going with this idea. Now we're going to warm up the, the legs a little bit. So we're going to do that by way of massage. So we're going to take the hands, we're going to press them down on the thighs, and we're going to just keep that pressure going from the hips to the knees. So press down enough so that you feel like you're penetrating past the skin, of course, a little bit more deeply into the muscle tissue. And then you can also lean forward with your hands like this and kind of rock back and forth and that gives a little more pressure, perhaps going a little more deeply into the muscle tissue. And this is a good way to do it if you don't have a lot of, um, you know, uh, motor action uh, control in the hands. So this, this makes a lot of sense to allow the weight of your body to help that. And then another thing we can do, as long as you're not on uh, blood thinners, you know, we're, we're going to take the hands and, and bounce them on the thighs. So we are feeling it even more in the muscle tissue. And of course, this is a technique that's used in a lot of massage therapy as well. And notice as you're doing this, even though we're not doing a super fast or a super intense movement, just by increasing the speed of our actions, the body will always respond and our breath will deepen. It's pretty cool how we're designed like that. Come back into neutral. Okay, now we're going to go for another little bit of a stretch. Okay, so now I want you to imagine that you have, okay, because it's fun to visualize. But imagine that you have in front of you your favorite, 
let's make it simple. Things to eat and drink, okay? And you're gonna reach for those things. But make it good, so take a, take a moment to really visualize it. What is it that you love to eat? And don't just think of the name of it. What is the texture? What is the aroma that this food or this drink has? What's the, of course, the flavor, but what, what does it feel like on the tongue? What does it feel like in the hand? How much of the experience is coming from the tongue? How much of it is gustatory? How much of it is uh, aromatic? How much of it is olfactory? How much of it is texture? Visualize it. And if you're motivated, you're going to want to reach for it. So. Visualize it even more precisely. Something you have on the right side, something you have on the left side. So we'll set up that visualization. What do you want to taste right now? Okay, so you're gonna reach for it now. We'll start with the hands on the thighs. Take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, reach across. Bracing yourself with one hand as you reach across, you pick that something up and you collect it, put it in your basket. Next one. Reach for it. Come back, put it in the basket. Just keep on doing that. All the while, hold the image in your mind of what it is that you're reaching for. Also, the taste of it sound it makes as you're eating it? Does it crunch? Does it squish? Is it something cold? Is it something warm? Is it something hot? Keep on going. Keep on going. There's no limit to how much we can eat. Keep on going with that image. Last grab. Now we've collected a lot. But we've also dropped some. So we're going to go for it. We're going to pick it up. Okay. So this one we have to be careful, of course, because we're going to be leaning forward. And we have to be realistic because for some of us, as we lean forward, it's hard to kind of get back up, you know. So we want to make it reasonable. So we're going to hold it uh, for a few breaths when we get down there and give our friends some time to, you know, get back in the upright position, right? So if you have... um, uh, issues in the in the upper back and tightness you know this might feel nice to do a stretch but also of course you know we want you to be careful about what you're doing and and following us um, in your own way of course so that we remain unique and important okay so let's say you dropped some of your favorite stuff on the ground we're gonna go with a five second rule here <laughs> okay so and besides we've all been spending so much time at home we were like everything is like crispy clean squeaky clean all our floors are perfect because we've had time to see to all that stuff so we're visualizing it perfectly but for now you've got some of your favorite stuff on the ground and we're going to go for it we're going to get it off the ground so take a deep breath in first just look at it exhale lean forward yes oh my there it is deep breath in exhale lean forward a little more maybe the elbows come down Okay, another deep breath in. Now reach with one hand. Exhale, reach. Stay like that for a moment, like you're just reaching, picking up, gathering all those things that were dropped. So you're going to get a handful, and you're going to come up. So deep breath in. Exhale, press with that other arm into your leg. Find a way to get your elbow back on that thigh. Okay, pause here. Deep breath in. And then exhale, come all the way up. Okay, come all the way back into a neutral position. We got one more handful to pick up down there. Again, visualize it, get it all straight. You're collecting this because you're gonna share it. 
and we're going to develop a system to be able to share things, you know, keeping in mind the social distancing orders that we have in play here. So what we're concerned with now is getting it off the floor. Deep breath in. Exhale, lean forward. Okay, so same thing. Deep breath in. Exhale, elbows onto the thigh. Okay, last one to get down closer to the ground. Exhale, lean forward, reach with the other hand if you can. So you're gathering, you're picking up, stretching the back of the body, stretching the arm long because we're motivated. And then keep reaching, we're collecting it all and now we're gonna come back up the same way. So take your hand full, deep breath in. Exhale, oval to the thigh. Deep breath in. Exhale, lift up a little, hands to the thighs. Deep breath in. Exhale all the way to an upright position. Okay, so here we are in our upright position. Now, what are you going to do with all that delicious food, those snacks that you've collected? We're going to share it. So. We're going to work with one arm at a time. So you're going to take one hand onto the chair side, the chair arm, the chair wheel, and we're going to share. So you're going to take hold of whatever it is that you've gathered. And even if it's not something you can gather in your hand, you know, we're working with some symbolism here. So you got to, we got to cut ourselves a little slack here. So deep breath in and then exhale, reach across. So squeeze the muscles in the chest. Use the other hand to help get your torso to turn. And now we're going to let everyone have some. So for the next few breaths, we're gonna stretch the arm long and with control, making the elbow as straight as possible. And we're gonna offer that open hand. Try to make that arm parallel to the ground, as parallel as you can. Keep reaching, keep reaching. If you have your friend a little far away, you might have to lean a little forward. Always in control. Everybody's gonna have a bite. Plenty to share. Let's come all the way back to neutral. Okay, one more handful. Other way. So, take a hold. Deep breath in. And then exhale, reach across. So, stay here for a few breaths, squeezing that arm in closer to your chest. Palm facing up, arm straight as possible, and then go for it. So everyone's gonna offer in their own way. So you keep reaching, but the important thing is that we're doing it with sincerity. You're reaching. And the important thing is that we're taking the time, enjoying simple moves, enjoying sharing, even when it's virtual, we can still share. And we're going to come back into neutral. I'm going to sit up nice and tall. And we're going to bring our hands to the heart. Not just to the organ that's beating in the chest, but the metaphorical heart. Let's say the heart center that is associated with patience, tolerance, compassion. Those things that never go out of style. There's things that we are seeing a lot of these days. A lot of people helping each other, being compassionate for each other's needs. We are all in this together more than ever. And because more of us are connected, obviously, through social media, here we are live streaming from a beautiful boat in the bay. But we're connected more than ever through our devices. And it can be a good thing. And as you bring your hands to the heart, let's focus on love and gratitude, specifically on gratitude. So this is the way we normally finish the class. This is the way we normally seal the class. And that is with an exercise of gratitude. So first, visualize, acknowledge someone or something you're grateful for. And take a moment to really fill it out in your imagination. Let's not shy away from the details. So I'm asking you not just to stretch the body and strengthen the body, but right now I'm suggesting that we keep our imagination strong and flexible. Visualize that person or that thing that you're grateful for in great detail. 
and now as if we can gather that gratitude and solidify it and add more detail more richness more three-dimensionality to it I'm gonna add another metaphorical move and that is on the inhale we're gonna lift the arms out to the side we're gonna lift them up like you're gathering the gratitude and then as you exhale you bring the hands to the heart okay that's the assignment go back and forth like that inhale reach out reach out and exhale bring it into the heart all the while adding more detail in your imagination about that person or that thing that you're grateful for with the breath let's do two more last one we're gonna reach out we're gonna reach up we're gonna bring our hands to the chest hold the hands there symbolically whatever gesture you like and this is the where the reality of our new circumstances really hits home because at this part of the class everyone who wants to participate aloud can say what it is that they're grateful for. And when we do the classes at Dharma Studio, we are kind of sitting in a circle. It's kind of a theater, really. And everyone can say out loud what they're grateful for. Sometimes it takes a while because there are quite a few of us that gather. Other times when we've been on this boat together, we've had I want to say one time we had about 15 people in wheelchairs. It was spectacular, but regularly a dozen for sure. And to hear people say out loud what they're grateful for, it just cracks you open. It's amazing. It's so inspiring. And we all celebrate whatever it is that people feel grateful for if they say it out loud. So, so now, unfortunately, it's just me. So it's not as interesting. However, I'm going to still say it. I'm going to say thank you. I'm grateful that you're able to come to this class again, that you're able to return to the impossible dream, that you're able to return to beautiful Biscayne Bay here with us. Special thank you to Deborah Mellon, the owner and admiral of the impossible dream, to all the others that are part of the crew. Special thanks to the Woody Foundation, who has the open-heartedness, the generosity, and the commitment to help people who are living with brain and spinal cord injuries, and to help people who are living with different levels of paralysis, and to help other local organizations in that mission as well. And thank you to Dharma Studio. We're all in this together. Thank you so much for coming. Please leave your comments and let us know if you're getting something out of these classes. We hope that you are, and we'll continue to do them as long as we have your okay. So now, enjoy a little bit of the bay.
shots of you 